All right, good luck. Um, so we're going to stick with what we've been playing lately, Ascenta. I think there's a divide between um, my performance for um, playing Ascenta and playing as Gota. My Ascenta openings are stronger than my Gota ones. Um, by it seems like a pretty wide margin. Cause with Sente, I'm able to play this aggressive stuff and not get murdered in the opening. Um, I don't even need to push that. Uh, okay, what do we do? I mean, whether or not I need to, I should probably first get my king out of this so it's not going to get checked. Oh, this is exciting. So, um, I want this pawn move to be part of my castle. But they are committing heavily to not opening this diagonal. But also they're not playing the Urashino opening. Um, so at some point they are going to open the diagonal. And things will get exciting. Um... And since I want to control those circumstances under which it opens, I might be the one deliberately closing it. Um, see, I'm still troubled of whether I should move my gold up and left here. It got me in trouble last game. Well, when I moved my rook over with that, too. This is so strange. So if they open the diagonal, I might close it at that time. Um, but yeah, having a silver, uh, well, here I can't exactly have my silver aim at this pawn, because there's not a pawn there yet. Alright, so they've opened this position. Do I dare exchange bishops and allow all the madness that might cause? Well, if I don't do that this game, it could happen some other game. <laughs> um, but... There's no reason for me to initiate the capture. Um, at least not while I have not castled yet. Um, so let's continue building a castle. And see how this goes. Right, so they are not keen on... Exchanging bishops right now. That's a lot of pawn moves. It's a bit hard for me to hit this pawn. Alright, I'm still not sure where I'm going to be attacking, so I'm going to wait for them to make more weaknesses first. Um. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, well, so if I had pushed my fourth, uh, rather the sixth foul pawn, this could have been interesting because then I could have pushed it again and tried to take here. Um, and let's just continue building my castle and not do anything crazy. So. What am I doing? We've built a castle, put the rook on a file, the bishop's on an open line, and we still haven't done anything crazy just yet. Um, well, my rook might want to move, and my silver might want to advance. So let's do this and see 
if he can provide any indication of like whether he's going to commit one of his generals to stay on this second rank. Or if all of his generals are just going to like float all cut off from each other. Like this is a beautiful shape in some way because uh, it's very flexible. It reminds me in chess there's an opening called the hippopotamus that kind of has a similar shape. Um, right, so this one instant, there's nothing defending a lot of things here, really. We're going to break open this sixth file. Um, I see he's prepared for that. At least he thinks he is. Is he? I don't know. Um... Is this really where you want the knight? Where's the king going? Well, my rook is stopped from going down the center file, so let's move the rook over this way. I've done this similar sort of thing before, putting the knight in front of the bishop, and the problem is that the knight, if it moves, is sacrificing itself. So this is actually kind of fixed in place. Okay, I guess the plan here is to advance the other knight. Like, what am I supposed to do about any of this? If I move the silver, they're going to push the center pawn. But then I push my center pawn and go back, I guess. Um... No. There's no need for any of that. Like, I push... Oh, my rook's not defended. My rook is not defended. We're going to play this, because there is one tactic in this position. And that's that my bishop can actually take here on account of this discovery against the king. So I don't have to immediately defend the rook, and I mean, yeah, the bishop could go back and defend it, but still. Um, I was thinking if they drop the pawn, my bishop checks here, and then I'm winning or forcing a rook exchange, but the pawn's in the way. I'm just not very good at this, like, opposing rook stuff. Um... Thankfully, this knight is preventing the bishop from attacking. Otherwise, this could get messy. But yeah, I keep playing my rook to the second file um, with the intent that someday I'll get a game where it actually works and I'll have some better understanding of what I've been taught and what I've read about. Um, so yeah, every game is a learning experience. Maybe in advance of this tactic, I should have pushed the third foul pawn. That way, after these tactics, I would have a clear idea of advancing my silver, and then silver takes, silver takes, silver takes. 
As it is now, if I push the third file pawn, they're just not going to take it. Not that they should have in the first place, but... <sighs> yeah. Pawn tension is weird. Okay, where do my pieces go now? I found a way to trap my bishop. Does that count for something? Um, Okay, I guess no, if I push that, there's room for a rook to drop back here after stuff happens. Um, hmm. Why did I think this was any good? Okay, so the rook's like... If I voluntarily offer a rook exchange, that's the only way that's happening here. Um, Alright, his knight threatens to hit my silver. It's a good enough excuse for me to move it. But also, this does plug the diagonal, so he can't, like, suddenly discover an attack on my rook. The downside here is that similar to on my other game, like, these pawns might make a threat somehow. Well, he'd first need to drop a pawn to get my bishop to move away. And if he does that, then my silver 5-5 five five threat... Uh, I'm sorry, but I retreat the bishop, and then I have the silver 5-5 five five threat which can only be met, I guess, by sacrificing the knight, but then my, if my silver advances, it's stuck in the center of the board. Oh, man. How do I stop all the rook drop ideas? I, I really can't. But it also feels like this center file king that, like, hasn't committed to a home yet uh, just seems out of place. Um, well, that's interesting, too. As much as I like pawn grabbing, I feel like there's much more to this position. It's really not about the pawn. Or is it? Pawn takes, knight takes, pawn drop, and then what? How do I attack anything here without just giving away all my pieces? Do I have to defend my rook? Is that what's going on? Pawn takes, knight takes, pawn drop, and the knight's trapped. But the knight moves here, and I can't take it. Hmm. But if pawn takes, knight takes, and then I move my gold up 
unpinning my silver. Like they sack the knight, I take it, bishop takes, gold takes, then I take my bishop. This is not working out. This is not working out. I should have some attacking idea, and I just don't. I'm going to defend my rook, and we're going to find somewhere useful to put my bishop. That's going to be the plan. Silver is so excited to participate in this game. So I'm hitting this pawn, and I want my bishop right in front of their king. So that when a rook trade happens, hopefully I've got like all the mating ideas ever. But I don't think it's that easy. Alternatively, just like silver takes, silver takes, and the gang the silver right up there would be really nice too. What I was concerned about with all of this is just, one, I need the rook to defend the bishop, and two, if like somehow pieces exchange. My gold is far away from my king. So that's all concerning, but also concerning in this position, I think, is like my opponent's king being directly in the center of the board and all of their castle being split up. Like, yeah, they could bring the gold forward and move their king somewhere, but they just haven't done it yet. So I'm debating sacrificing the bishop. Bishop takes pawn, silver takes, silver takes. I don't really get to take this pawn behind it, do I? <sighs> I can never have anything nice. If I drop a pawn here, they take my bishop, I take their silver. But the problem is, they just move the silver instead of letting me just take it. And then my silver here has nowhere to go. Um, yeah, I have to retreat and not doing anything insane here.
<sighs> There's got to be something I can do in this position. Maybe the answer is just I need to be more patient. Maybe there's not a tactic to win this. Shogi's hard. I could take the pawn and go back. This pawn actually is annoying. Having another pawn in hand could not be a bad thing, but still. It's not an easy position. Yeah, if I let that pawn live here, they're eventually going to put another piece down right next to it. And that's right next to my castle. So we're going to play this extremely patient move that annoys me. Um, but it actually makes my bishop more active. So yeah, they've done reasonably well defending against my attacks so far. Um, I really don't want to attack from my castle and like try to push up this file, but like what else am I supposed to do here? Okay. Well spotted. Interesting. It's never an easy break in this game. Well, um, that's a problem. I guess my bishop can give chase. I really... Yeah, that sucks, but could be worse. Okay, still could be worse than this. This is still pretty bad, but could be worse. What do I do? I'm not sure that pawn move actually helps them at all. Well, this is stupid, but we're going to do it anyway. I don't even really want this pawn. I'm sorry, this exchange... This forces my gold up here, I guess, unless I'm allowing a rook exchange. I just assumed that I would allow a rook exchange because I've been wanting it for the longest time, but maybe there's a problem tactically with it. And if there's a tactical problem with the rook exchange, then forcing my gold into the middle of that could be a problem. But yeah, I don't know why else they would push this. They don't have a silver right now. Now they do. Yeah, I am very slow at finding these things, at least today. All right, we've got a bishop. Let's enjoy the bishop. Also, let's get the bishop away from my rook. 
just so when this does land and he does end up promoting everything, that's one less piece I give away. Uh, yeah, we got to take here. So this is his big idea. Uh, to some degree, this is successful. It did cost him some material to get here. But yeah, let's put the rook on an open file. Let's have a positive outlook about this. And note that, like, I can bishop drop on him and, like, promote the bishop and take the lance. And my other bishop is pretty active. So it's, this is not one-sided. In terms of the clock time, like, it's not a chess game. You actually get the full uh, Byoyomi every move, and there's no advantage to building up time on the clock because there isn't that concept. So, yeah, once I do land a Byoyomi, I don't need to panic anymore. Um, interesting. That's his final pawn and the final file. Um, Trying to decide whether to go forward or retreat. Um, either way, like if I block my rook, that's terrible, but anything else seems pretty reasonable here. I push, that gives him room for his pieces. So, well, it doesn't matter whether I go forward or backward if my aim is to end up here. Yeah, this is fine. I should not have moved on the first second of Yoyomi. That's a time management error. But at this point, I know that, like, I'm willing to have him push and then push here again, and this seals his knight in place. Um, there's nothing wrong with this move. It's just the timing. Where? Wait, hang on. He could actually drop his gold to trap my bishop. So I should have spent more time because there was a tactic and I completely missed it. Um, alright. Might still be fine, though. Because, like, a gold in the center of the board is not really well positioned and I could sacrifice this for the knight and start attacking. And then pretend that it was my plan the whole time. Um, but yeah, giving him a bishop is pretty scary. On the other hand, a gold is a useful piece to defend the king, but not in the center of the board it isn't. It'd be a really heavy move for him to chase down my bishop. Meanwhile, I should focus on getting these pieces. Like, it's not like he's going to open up tons of squares all of a sudden for my bishop to drop, so there's no use in holding on to the bishop in hand. It makes sense to just put it down and start attacking. Um, so yeah, placing it here and promoting it to take the lance would be pretty reasonable. If for no other reason than... Like, trying to get my king somewhere to escape. This gold defending the knight actually is troublesome, but there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, like, if I start trying to drop to attack this, I just can't. So... Oh, he's not trapping my bishop. Strange. Uh, that's a sensible defensive move, but it doesn't deal with my bishop drop here threat. Do I want this gold? How badly do I want it? I don't want it badly enough for me to let his silver up and attack my king. Not that interested in taking a gold. 
On the other hand, well, there's no need to take it right now. His next move is going to be pawn advance to hit my bishop again. And here it might be worth taking the gold. Um, previously, that could have been dubious, but here, if they open up this diagonal, uh, there's I don't get to use this diagonal, but it'd be nice to have that line open uh, with tempo. But yeah, this gold doesn't make any sense up here. If I had two pawns, I could pawn their pawn here and, like, um, create some interesting tactics, but I only have one. Pawn here, gold takes, and I don't have another pawn to, like, continue with anything fun. So, yeah, it probably just makes sense to promote my bishop. My only saving grace here is that he is in Vyoyomi, so both of us could make mistakes at this point. Also, he doesn't have a pawn in hand, and I'm threatening a pawn drop right there. So my bishop actually is useful, despite looking pretty terrible. Like, that should be my goal, is to stop his rook from promoting. And I think I've actually accidentally achieved it here. So, this is what time pressure can do to um, amateur players. Right. And that looks like a nice decisive threat. Except I'm going to pawn drop right there. And then maybe do some more drops right in front of it, but um, yeah. Or I could pawn drop right on the rook's head and then take the token and not let him take my knight and the lance. That's a bit risky. Um. I can't read at all, can I? There's nothing risky about dropping immediately on the head. Yeah, this is the clearer move. And then if the rook takes, we have a silver drop right there. And, okay, well, it's a heavy drop. There's really no need for it. I can't read. I imagined incorrectly that I could just drop the pawn that I've not taken yet. Now I'm taking the pawn, but I don't have it in hand to drop just yet. Now I have the pawn, and he's not getting my knight and lance. Um, so what's the material balance? He's got a gold. It's looking silly here on 6-6 six, six, or 4-4. Four, four. Um, so... Yeah, I've got a bishop for his gold, which is very slight material edge. Um, and I don't think I'm immediately hanging anything. I thought so. Now, actually, just now I spotted spotted a tactic. Um, and it looks very strong. So, despite being a bit anxious about this, like, it's better than retreating my silver back here. If I take the knight, gold takes, and I drop the knight here. I'm forking two silvers. Both of which are defended, but... Still. It looks like a very useful tactic. Um, and they've plugged their 
file in front of the rook. Now, do I have better than just forking this, these silvers in front of the king? I don't think so. Um, well, forking two silvers is a piece for a piece, even though a general is worth a lot. <sighs> I was about to think about like dropping the bishop here and seeing can I promote it, but um, that's not worth... Like, first of all, he traps the... So we don't need to look at that further. Um, yeah, so this is what I know I want to do here. And I know he doesn't... He hasn't planned this out. Because we're both in time pressure. Um, right. I don't like giving away the knight. Knight is a really use or fun piece to have. For me, it wasn't that useful because the like his pawns are also a coordinated. There's nowhere to put my knight, but um, I did briefly consider putting it here, chasing this gold, but then moves away. Oh, but then the pawn. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I missed a way to get a gold instead of a silver. Even so, this might be best. Because I think he has to take with one gold or the other gold. If he takes the silver, the spot opens. Well, I can't really make use of it right away, but... Um, this center is suspect. It's just the best I can describe that. Go. Nope. Um, he's got two generals defending this knight. This king is covering so much space. Oh, his gold is trapped. This time not to a pawn, like I trapped a opponent's gold for a pawn the other uh, week, but here I'm trapping it for a silver. I would put my pawn somewhere, except, like, there's nowhere I can put a pawn favorably here. Um, almost every pawn drop I can do here is illegal. I would move my rook somewhere, but there's nowhere to move it. I would move my bishop, but everywhere can attack is covered, so, you know, we're dropping this here since none of my other drops work. Okay. This is prompting me to really want to open this file. Um, or the center file, really. That'd be nice. So yeah, I am letting him take this pawn. 
And then he's going to attack my rook again with the silver, but I think by that time I'll have some piece attacking him somewhere. Um, that's the plan. It's not a very elaborate plan. But, like, all my pieces are just crying for space to breathe. I'm just so impatient right now. All my pieces are so miserable, I'm willing to sacrifice a bishop just to try to give them somewhere to go. So we'll see, like, if he can manage to hold everything that I'm attacking while we're both in time pressure. It looks to me like he can, but, like, I was just so fed up with this position that I wasn't just going to sit idly by while all my pieces drop. Something had to be done. So we're starting an attack. A nice tactic. Pretty standard one, but still pretty nice. So I'm going to try to open this file for my rook.
Alternatively, I'm going to try to open this space so that I can drop a gold. So after my knight takes there, silver takes gold, drop. If the king pursues this, I don't know. I'm trying to open something. Maybe I'm far too optimistic. But um, worst case, I'm just risking a pawn and a knight. The stakes are pretty low here. Well, no, I've committed my bishop. The bishop is staked. Um, um, We're just going to keep sacking stuff. I don't care anymore. Can't all be bad, right? So I'm willing to wager a bishop, in addition to everything else I've sacrificed, I'm willing to wager my bishop that I've not overcommitted here. Um, that, like, maybe I survive this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm moving quickly because I think I'm lost. Let's be honest. But... I'm moving quickly because I think, in truth, I've lost. Here I'm not so sure. If I gold drop, they chase my bishop. No, I think this works. I think maybe they had to dive into the corner, and I can't read that. But here we can force apart the king and the silver, which allows this to promote. And with this promoted, well, even without it promoted, like, they can't take this silver. But their king is now going to make a mad dash for the opposite side of the board. And we're going to see whether I'm in time. It's not looking good. It's really not looking good. So there's tons of pieces at their disposal. Um, if I do a material count, I've given away a rook and a gold. 
but my king is temporarily safe, and I'm questioning whether the same could be said for their king. But, like, chasing this king is going to be super hard, especially with one or more rooks protecting it. Yeah. So... My silver is offsides, but this does not call for me to make another sacrifice. Like, if I were to bring it back to hit the gold, they would just gold take. And if I sacked another silver here, they just keep taking my pieces. I can't keep giving away two for one, two for one over and over. So, here, this silver is just going to be miserable for a second while we exchange golds and then come back with the silver to hit whatever takes this back. They can't protect this with the knight, so the only things that can protect this um, are the rook and the bishop. Right, so they're just going to give me this. I think. I don't think we're fighting over this gold. I think they're just running away, but um, maybe I'm mistaken. All right, so bishop, king, no, I need my silver to participate in the attack. Mm. It's not easy. I don't get to take their lance, do I? Not even sure I want it. So, yeah, let's go back this way. I think I need to do this because I need another piece next to their king. And I know this is hanging, but um, I don't know. Like, if I don't get something right next to their king immediately, uh, things are going to get bad for me in a hurry. Even worse than they are. So, uh, yeah, we need this lever. And it's not like this pawn could go anywhere else, so let's put it here.
Yeah, let's promote this. This is the slowest attack ever, but we need pieces to attack, so. Um, All right, so this knight is uh, only supported by the pawn. And I do want to move my bishop to somewhere more active. So, like, he's basically asking me to take this pawn. Um, oh, he wants to hit this head. All right, that makes sense. Um, Hmm. Wish I had another pawn. If I'd been thinking, I would have avoided this situation. I can't let him just take here. My castle's too fragile. Um. If I'd been forward thinking, I would have put my pawn back here on uh, five nine. So it inner blocks the rook from taking my gold. Um, but since he has this rook takes gold threat, I need to protect this head before something bad happens. But now I can take this pawn, but it's just a pawn. What good is that? Oh, all right. Well, this is not looking good. This is not at all looking good. Um, I need to play the most aggressive move here. So this threatens mate in one. Threatening mate in one allows me to dictate the terms of this fight. So, yeah, terms are I attack stuff and you run away. But I could surround him here. And then he has to put down another piece somewhere to defend against my mate in one threat. Um, you know, letting him run away is just tragic for me. I can't let that happen. So my current plan is silver takes pawn and silver takes there. Um, so he's got to put down more pieces to defend his king. Or he's got to like forcibly remove my gold before I have a chance to attack him further. Which he might be able to do. Actually that might not be too hard for him to forcibly remove. Well, I'm trying to read this out. This being a bishop check, and bishop takes here, and then a gold drop, and gold takes here. Um, interesting. Hmm. 
Man, this attack is so slow. Uh, world's slowest attack. Go! Keep going, slow attack. You can do it. Um... Alright, so... This was kind of the idea that if he wins this gold, I can win that gold for my token. Again, taking this knight has never been useful, so I keep deferring taking it. But if ever there ends up being a position where silver takes knight helps me mate, I can always do that. So far, every time I've looked at it, it's been useless to do that, but you never know. Maybe there will be some future position where it'll matter. Um, Alright, so that's a fork. I mean, I'm attached to a rook also. Like, I don't like giving away rooks at all, but what can you do? Yeah, no, you have to give it away here. The question is, do I take it? I'm pretty sure since all my remaining pieces suck that I need that rook. Um, I just cannot see for the life of me how um, I managed to trap this king. So we're actually going to take the piece, even though it feels unwise. I don't want to give him a tempo here. So I'm defending against two knights, a rook, and everything in hand, although he can't use the pawns yet. So I've given him one move. I debated pushing the edge pawn and trying to drop the gold in front of it, but it doesn't work yet. Tempting. Um. Hmm. Oh, so he wants to run his king forward now. Um. 
yeah, we can't let that happen for free. So while this piece is still in front of the pawn, these are kind of a coffin. The king cannot step through his own pieces. So he's going to have to stop me from doing a gold drop here. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe, maybe my mating attack is so feeble that their attack crashes through first. Um, that's possible. I was afraid of that. Okay, so what do we do now? Oh, are you kidding me? Do I actually have to sacrifice the lance here, like move the knight up? Is this the first time that I'm playing a knight move in a game Sanctuary. and it's actually a good move? Um, could be. Well, if I do that, they will drop a gold Sanctuary. here. My lance is protected, actually. It's not hanging. But yeah, it's still exciting moving a knight and having that actually make a difference. Where I move 121. Apparently that's the earliest time I should be moving a knight in a shogi game. At least until I learn better openings. Or until I learn my openings better than I currently know them. But yeah, Rook Drop is a threat here, so they do have to like do something about it. But a Rook is not the only piece that can go on the square. I could take the Lance. I could take either Lance. Uh, I could also move the token back. Oh my god. That's horrifying. Um, that's crazy. That this token might actually make a difference too. So that sets up a mate in one threat. Again, possible because this promoted silver is just hanging out out here, preventing the king from stepping in. Although maybe somehow there were tactics with my knight back here or an ability to drop a piece somewhere. Like maybe I could have stopped the king from advancing, but still. Um, yeah, now they have a gold drop there. I could take this lance. Or actually, I could drop the rook back here, threatening a gold drop here. Wow. And then they have to like put down the bishop to stop me from... Um, yeah, that's crazy. They have to commit all their pieces to defending this square. Okay, yeah, I guess that's possible too. Um, I 
think that does it. And the idea is that Rook takes gold promotion check, and regardless which way it's taken back, I'm threatening mate here. Um, to stop various mating ideas, they would need to put a bishop down, but there's nowhere to put the bishop. Oh no, bishop, well, could go back here, but that doesn't save them for very long to stop this. And if they move this gold over, what did I have planned here? I was intending a gold drop there, but that doesn't work. <sighs> I just persist in making this game difficult for myself, don't I? Hmm. Oh no, if the gold moves back, I have a gold drop there, mate. That was the point. Uh, yeah. Wow, what a game. Alright, uh, good game. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so this is the teaching ladder. So we follow each game with a game analysis. Uh, this is the button I was searching for here, standard board size. Yeah, indeed. That was nuts. I don't think either of us anticipated this game getting anywhere near as crazy as it was. Oh, did I miss? Well, okay. Ah, uh, I see. They're solving the other variations. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think we were all pretty tense about that endgame. Although, about a hundred moves ago, I was not happy about just the way this game was going. Um, but it turned out okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, this is the big idea. Oh, well, maybe my key concept was flawed. Hmm. Because I missed that they could push this pawn. That does actually complicate things slightly. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll start from the beginning, because that's where we could make the best use of our time. Um, there's a lot that happened that endgame. And probably engines will tilt back and forth all day about it. All right, so. Yeah, actually, I got agitated, didn't I? Um, like thinking, yeah, of course my pieces are positioned okay. And then I couldn't, f hmm. Let's see, what does this threaten? Oh, this might actually be a strong way to reply to my play. Hmm. Under uh, what pieces I should exchange? Um, yeah, I'm super curious about this. Like, do I even offer the Rook exchange here? Normally it's supposed to favor a uh, static Rook to have the Rooks get exchanged, but here the King just... I just don't know about this King in the center in this particular castle. Um, hmm, I don't know. It's good, though, that we can start to think about some of the higher level questions and not get mated, or not lose all of my pieces in the opening every time. Um, now we're only losing most of my pieces in the middle game, so that's progress. Uh, I think I'd take this, right?
My main concern is I don't really know like who stands better after the rooks exchange. Um, if they do exchange, like I don't have very many. I don't have anywhere to drop my rook against their castle, and they have several places they could drop theirs. But I don't know if that should stop me from doing this. Actually, I have one place I can drop it. Um, but I assume, hmm, at least looking at it now, I assume there's something they can do about that. But what do I know? Looks complicated, for sure, because um, just so much stuff is hanging. Yeah, no, actually that pawn advance might be... Or, okay, yeah, this makes sense, too. Um, so I'm anxious to get this in as soon as possible. I do really enjoy having a dragon. Perhaps a bit too much I enjoy it. Because, like here, this dragon would be offsides. I guess, hmm. Like, I would offer a rook exchange, because that would potentially div um, remove squares that my rook could drop. Uh, if they do get exchanged, there's nowhere I can drop. No, actually, I could drop it back here. And I could just keep offering exchanges. But, um... I guess they're thinking they're fine here. Um, can I attack somehow? It's really a question of who gets mated first, isn't it? I've built half Mino. My opponent's built something. It's like I don't know, Crab Castle? I forget what it's called. But they have all these generals in the center of the board. Um, I guess I just take this, and I'm intending a lance drop on the fourth file. But it's not so clear. Like, they have uh, this pawn advance threat, maybe. Yeah. Um, and like, what do I do? Maybe I am dropping all my pieces again in a fancy way. Yeah, I got the 1500 rating. <laughs> they grow up so fast. Uh who knows how long I'd keep that rating. Who knows. Um, that's good to make progress. Um, yeah, like, what the heck do I do here? Hmm. Yeah, this position uh, seems bad for me. Amazingly enough, uh, my attack just falters, but I don't see any way to improve it. So yeah, I guess, you know, they had attacking chances in the opening. Maybe the center file is the wrong file for my rook anyway. Yeah, this, I guess I expected this immediately. I was not, I was displeased about this, but that's okay. Um, well, I was actually kind of cheerful I could do something, but it's not the happiest position I've ever had. Let's promote it.
Okay, so... Um... Yeah, this is complicated. Again. Um... Um, hmm. I don't know, like, my pieces can't find good squares. Oh, yeah, I guess we could promote the bishop. Why not? It's probably not my worst move ever. Okay, yeah, well, so... I guess we offer a rook exchange, which maybe I should have offered earlier. I don't know. Am I mated? Is this really checkmate? Oh, hang on. Hang on. I actually can take this. Let's take that. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I still like his side of this position. Like, all his attacks are uh, faster than mine, except for the one that happened in the game. So, got him to play some defensive moves, but that's because his king is, like, super exposed. Um, Yeah, so I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah, that's right. And during the game, I said that maybe this was forced. Uh, yeah, I was in time pressure when I got here. Not really sure what I can do. I don't really... S like, what can I do here, right? Can I do anything? I thought I had something, but I think I'm I was mistaken. I guess this is my big idea, but I don't think it works. I see, yeah. Um, what can I do now? It's not easy. Um, I mean, I'm basically out of pieces, right? I need to keep adding pieces near their king. Because once my pieces run out, it's over. But, um, yeah, there's got to be some way to defend. Actually, running might not be so bad. Yeah, yeah, this looks bad for me. I don't think there's much I can do anymore. But I don't know, like, what else I can do. Hmm. 
Yeah, this, this one seems to do it. Yeah, so... This is the madness that happens on time pressure. But here... Um, what was I looking at here? Well, that's... Yeah, that's one thing I was deliberating. Um, I guess the other I was considering was just this, right? And I thought maybe I could be okay here. Actually, wait. Yeah, maybe this does mate. Yeah. Just barely. It's so close. Oh, wait. Um, but wait, there's more. Oh, okay. Well, um, and pawn drop mate is never a legal move, so I need to find something else here. Uh, hmm. But, my goodness, this is so weird. So I guess my threat is to advance this pawn and then to push the silver in, but that's not... Yeah, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, maybe this doesn't surround at all, right? Um... What can I do? Is there anything I can do here? Oh, this is no longer pawn drop mate. Uh, cause he can take it. Um, I think what you, oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. There's gotta be something. I was going to suggest, uh, taking, capturing without promoting. Uh, but the silver is already promoted, so yeah, you don't really have that option. Um, hmm. There's got to be some way out of this, no? Do my attacks ever work this well? Um... So, like, how do you break this attack up? Um, yeah, well, the engines will say one way or the other whether this attacking idea I had was sound at all, but... Um, I wonder what happens maybe if you go up here directly. Um, hmm. um, let's try this. Yeah, this is confusing. I mean, there's got to be some way out, right? Maybe not. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I 
guess this is unclear. I thought in the game I had it, but the more I look at this, hmm, this looks worse for me. Um, oh, he made a move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. Well, silly me. Okay. Yeah, this is nuts, isn't it? Um, so now it's a question of do I need the pawn drop or do I just do this outright? I think this outright just works in this position. Um, I guess what all of this means is that the promoted silver capture doesn't escape in time. Hmm. So weird, because he doesn't have a, a general to drop near his king. Yeah. Definitely the end game was complex. Um. I think that's the conclusion we reach here, whether or not that actually does mate. Um, yeah, no, I thought this was the better try for him to escape. Um, and this is me acknowledging that since um, he's put this gold right next to his king, now he kind of has to defend it. Hmm. Maybe this uh, drop was too slow. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, maybe the king just needed to run. I don't know. We. I'm not even sure to where, but but yeah, having this gold here. Gave me something to attack. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of, but maybe I was mistaken. Actually, almost... Well, I'm not sure. Oh. Oh, this is challenging too. Um, but here, I think the king is cut off. Well, maybe you have to run back this way now. Apparently they don't want to run that way. I'm curious. I was basically, I don't know, trying to find what I thought were the only moves for myself in this position, where I just have to keep making this complicated over and over, um, and hope that there's a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere. Um, they have the luxury that maybe they can play, I don't know, um, Maybe they can choose what moves they play. I don't really get a luxury of being able to freely select from a variety of moves. There's a lot of options. Um, but here I need to drive this king back toward their side of the board. If it escapes to my side, there's I have no mate. So I need this king to remain trapped where the knights cannot help it. Um... Now, the knights can cover squares on the third rank, but it's hard. The further we get up the board, the more likely the knight can be useful to stop my attack. So, yeah, I have to force the king up the board. 
that's why I know that this silver drop or general drop here has to be played. I don't really get a choice there. But yeah, it's nice um, being able to play games and um, not constantly fret about opening concerns. So maybe I've reached some level of proficiency with Shogi after all. I mean, if I freely get to decide which tournament I play in, um, I don't think I do, but um, if I had that choice... It's a choice between um, drumming on beginners or getting to play against uh, higher level amateurs who are just going to beat me senseless. So at least from the latter, we'd actually learn something. The latter, L-A-T-T-E-R, the second of those two. Um, oh wait, is this really what I intended to do here? Um... Yeah, this is too slow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I was intending a general drop, but this is just way too slow. So, yeah, I'm just busted. Well, no, I have this. I always have just one more resource in all these positions. It's crazy. They say if you have four pieces, your attack never runs out. I have somewhere between three and five doing this attack. Um, um, uh, I don't know. Do I take this now? Maybe? I'm not sure. I mean, it feels like they could just take my pawn and the king runs away. <laughs> and like my whole attack comes to nothing. But then I drop another piece and yeah, this just keeps going. So yeah, if I get well it looks like I've graduated, I'm not completely sure. Like I made it once. I, when I first joined the site, I played a couple decent games somehow. Um, I mean, had my previous game been raided, this would not have promoted me, but... That's just semantics at that point. Uh, that's just me being nervous and trying to make excuses for it. Um... So silvers do like attacking from this direction. Yeah, I just remember uh, during our tourney to Shodan, I got the chance to play against the Llama Lord. We had an exciting game, but not as exciting as our previous encounter. Um, and get the sense that I'm going to have a, num a number of games coming up that are going to be more or less uh, strong players just beating me down. But maybe this is what makes playing in these tournaments exciting, is the opportunity to learn. With the tourney to Shodan, I liked that like, I got paired against people above and below me. Um, if I end up playing in tourney to Master, it's going to be a lot of players above me. Not a whole lot of room below. Um, but... Maybe I can handle myself there. Maybe it'll be okay. If I can 
uh, read out stuff like this. And if I can find time to stop coding sites like PlayShogi and Lee Chess and Stockfish and all that, if I can take a break from that coding long enough to learn something about Shogi, um, maybe I'll be okay. Or maybe it'll just be fun seeing like a wide variety of openings played against me. I mean, we're going to get in trouble in the opening regardless of what tournament I play in. Um, yeah, I agree. That um, It looks like this attack seems to have worked here. Um, how did we even get here, I wonder? So... Hmm. Maybe the gold drop was the turning point after all. It's hard to say. There's just so much stuff going on. Oh, follow latest position. It's maybe this one here. Where I ended up just getting a gold for free because... I had a, a fun attack going. <sighs> I think my opponent still thinks this might be their best defense, but... Um... Okay, yeah, we're going to take that, sure. I mean, this gives me a sense of something like playing Go, where you have to surround a piece from three sides to take it. Um, uh, okay, they have a Night Drop threat. That's, like, instantly fatal if I ignore it. Um... Uh, <laughs> that said, I want to ignore it. How fatal is it? I don't know. <sighs> I have no idea how to counter this. There might be a better way to counter the night drop. Oh, he can still play it. Oh, that is unfortunate for me. Can I not just take this? Oh, can I not just take this? I don't know. We're going to see an equally crazy attack take place here. Uh, except I don't have as much defending as they have. Like, they had this rook the entire time defending their position. I got butt kiss defending my king. Yeah, I mean, I've got, like, this small little shelter, but it just feels horrible. Um... Yeah, so like... Oh, this? Really? This gives me another tempo. I mean... You better have something convincing for that tempo. Yeah, engines will... I usually run the engine 
uh, after the game for doing a post-game analysis, I usually run the engine for about uh, 10 seconds per position, 5 to 10, uh, for light games. And for really heavy um, games where there's just a ton to read out, I usually leave it running about 30 seconds per position to analyze the game and annotate it. This one is going to take more than 30 per position just because of the extremely dynamic nature of what's going on. I think it could take up to a minute per position to really probe these things out so many moves deep. Hey, uh, the Llama Lord, though, this is $14.99, and then you see the yellow banner on my name. Um, so it appears that I might be joining the tourney to master after all. Um, yeah, just so my previous game that I was playing with the Shogi Hall tournament, um, I got crushed um, by Moonsei. And then this game, um, somehow, again, I eked out a win in some crazy, ridiculous endgame where I ended up sacrificing most of my pieces. Um, so, yeah. My plan today was really that I was not thinking that I was going to win in the Shogi Hall tournament, and I would just keep playing today and the rest of the week until finally um, I make one Don. But due to this incredible fluke of a game, um, we seem to have made it earlier than anticipated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know, this is such a roller coaster of a game, I'm struggling to analyze it. In a... And we're going back and forth a lot. Toward the very end there, yeah, I think that's better. I think his mistake here was when he dropped a gold on 5-2. And um, hereafter, it just got really hard for him to escape. Um, maybe he had a chance to escape, and we both completely whiffed on it and just didn't see it at all. But uh, Well, either that or escaped... Uh, faster. It was a complex uh, endgame. I just got super lucky. Yeah, I thought I was going to be like playing Shogi all day today until I finally made one down, but we seem to have made it earlier. Yeah, I was, I was really thinking he was going to go for the old king run, because like I've sacrificed way too many pieces. My attack shouldn't work. Like many of my attacks, it's just, uh, I don't know. Um, let's see, is there anything I can do here, maybe? So my threat, I guess, is horse to somewhere. I mean, there's the mate in one threat, but I'm assuming he has some way of removing it. But I renew, like, if he does silver takes pawn, I have horse for four mate. Um, um, yeah, and then this is mate. So that's the other point of the sacrifice. Yeah, horse four four is so smooth here. It really gives the impression that like I'd read this out or something. Um, but like my uh, yeah. So it looks like at this point running with the king is just too slow. But like, how else do you get out of here? Right then, there's that mate. Um, I wonder, um, so we get to all this, um, I wonder if this is an idea. I 
maybe earlier there was a Rook 8-2 note. I don't know. So, like, this sort of thing covers these squares. Um, it just seems like this Rook is not doing as much as it could be doing. Um, not even sure where. Let's see. Not really sure. Uh, somewhere around here. Just like this. It seems to keep. Oh. I was thinking this. Um, I mean, this might be reasonable too, but um, just like this rook is in the corner and just kind of observing the game. <sighs> Um, um, plus it might prevent tactics where I end up winning the rook. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, ah, uh, let's see, Llama Lord thinks, uh, Rook 7-9 is worth, uh, try two, um, yeah, that's, uh, 8-2. So, like, both of these are maybe worth a try. Um, yeah, I was scared. I didn't have much confidence in my attack. I played it anyway, but, like, what am I doing? Yeah. So I guess either attack faster or defend more effectively. I guess I have to do something like this here. Uh, this is like one thing I could have done better. Gold 5-2. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like, I mentioned that to him a couple of times. I don't know whether he read it or not, but... Um, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, shouldn't have placed this guy here. <laughs> Uh, just uh, kept it in hand. But, yeah. Oh, I guess what all this means is that my rook takes silver sacrifice is just insane. It was ill-timed. Maybe I needed to play, like, one more move before doing it. Yeah, 
My mistake. Yeah, that pawn drop is all... It annoys me every time an opponent does that. Um, because it's so good. It's such an effective pawn drop. Um, and the, with the half Mino castle. Uh, spiraled out of control. But hey, at least I didn't lose in the opening. Even if I had lost this game, it would not have been in the opening. We would have gotten to, like, yeah, past move 32 before getting a lost position. So, that's progress. Oh. So, like, this sort of thing. Yeah, everything about this position confused me. So he's built up a presence in this upper right quadrant of the board. He's put his knight and pawn um, in front of the bishop, so the bishop can't promote over here. And they also control this 4-5 or five square, so I can't, like, open up the file. So I didn't know where my attack should be, if I should have an attack. Um, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, so, like, should I... Oops, I'm not the one controlling this position. Hmm. I like what else? Are, okay. What should I consider doing here? Yeah, actually. Yeah, my position collapses here because my generals are not together. So I shouldn't do bishop takes, I shouldn't do rook takes, maybe I shouldn't have offered the exchange in the first place, but what else can I do other than just sit waiting for him to destroy me? I don't know. There must have been something I could do, but my main other idea in the position of pushing the right hand fourth file pawn is just doesn't lead anywhere. Okay. Ah. Yeah, I guess I could build that up. This this makes me weaker against bishop drops. Oh, both of these are playable. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm just in general a bit paranoid about stuff attacking me here. I'm actually reasonably well fortified against whatever he can throw at me, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I could just complete Mino Castle, because there's not going to be a bishop exchange. Alright, he's gonna go have dinner. Fair enough. Yeah, that was a crazy, crazy adventure. Um, at least I read out the mate at the very end. But goodness. Um, sorry, I forgot to look at the comments before switching what position we were looking at. So, yeah. Silver 6-6 six, six is an idea. And then Rook 5-8. So we're talking about this, and then moving this rook here somehow, and gold 7, 8. Yeah, okay. And the bishop just hangs out here until there's a better time to activate it. 
uh, instead of pawn seven eight. Yeah. Um, so let's back up a little bit. Yeah, I mixed all my openings here. So the reason I moved the rook over was to see if I could get him to commit to some, whether he was going to move some of these pawns or not. I know in the past I've pushed this pawn, and it's just been a loss of a tempo. Although it, it clarified that this file was opening. Here it's not so clear which file opens. So yeah, something like this. And gold can move here and the rook over there. Or rather, gold goes... Um, yeah, I could end up going like this back again. So when I moved over, uh, I got my answer, and I didn't like it very much. Um, yeah, so he blocks my attack on his king here. Um, and it was only here that I realized I can't do what I wanted to do, which was this. This is no good. Um, so yeah, that's why, I mean, this might be playable, um, and yeah, during the game I was oscillating back and forth about should I do this, um, I was for some stupid reason concerned about this move, which is really nothing to worry about, it in no way prevents an in in fact, it makes it easier for me to open the center file, so that's not happening. Um, and silver could always duck back if I need it to. Really, where this would be concerning is if this diagonal were already open and they could hit the head of the silver, but it's not so easy to strike at. So they'll probably complete their castle this way, and um, yeah, I'm not totally sure where I go. Yeah, I don't know that I like Rook 8 8 either. Okay, so like this idea is. Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah, now this makes some sense. So, yeah, as I'm um, threatening to hit this. Um, that's why they. I kept bringing up the idea of pushing the center pawn. And it was only after I'd moved the rook to 8 8 that I realized, like, even here, it's just not that good. Um, oh, maybe gold 7 8 first? Okay, we have comments. Let's see what the comments are. Yeah, that king is on an adventure, man. Um, but here, like, even here, they can't really stop me from taking on 4-4. Four, four. Um, well, you don't want the king and the rook together, but this just seems, I don't know. I mean, I'm probably misplaying this terribly, but uh, this is just what I'm looking at. So they defend both of their center points in the strangest manner possible, but it is defended. But now the silver doesn't really have anywhere to go. Yeah, this does look scary for him. Um, I guess I take here. And if I'm... I'm not sure. I mean, I could repeat. Also, silver 4-4 four, four there. Oh, right. They didn't actually manage to get a gold on 5-3. Um, yeah, so that's right. So they have to take. And, 
Well, it's a position. It's a position. I've probably misplayed this, because, like, I don't see a way to win from here. Oh, this is why you want gold 7-8. Okay, I don't really get it, but we can put that on the board. Whenever the bishop moves, pawn 8-6 might be through it. Okay, yeah. I see, so that's the reason. So you can freely move the bishop. Um, that makes sense. Oh wait, this would trap the silver. Even that would not be the worst fate for the silver, but yeah, like it's a hard position. Um, I just put the pawn back. So I should back up a bit. Um, and somewhere around here, play that. And just wait for something to happen. Yeah, I really don't understand this. Aside from seeing, like, a pawn on 5-4 means that my silver can't use the center. Oh, there's a problem on 6-9 with the silver fork. Yeah, so I need to be slightly more patient. So, um, there's no way I can get the rook back there with tempo, right? Well, I guess the way to get it back there with tempo is if they take my pawn, then take and with the rook and move it back. Yeah. Hmm. There's no rush, but... Um... <sighs> okay. Yeah, you're right. I was so stressed out about, like, thinking something on my left side of the board was exposed. I'm not in that much trouble here, because it's really unclear what the opponent's doing. Um, hmm. Okay, so yeah, the gold-silver combination apparently solves whatever threats they might have in this immediate position. My opponent did mention in post-game analysis that they pushed the wrong pawn like they had intended to push the seventh foul pawn and move the silver over that way. Um, and I guess you're right that like with this pawn stuck on 6-4 there's really not a lot they can do to hit this unless somehow their silver could teleport over here so they could like push this but um, silvers don't move this way. So it's for them to actually be able to advance. Um, it's not going to be easy. Um, so I don't know. Is this an idea? Maybe. Like I get that the knight is not going to hit and win the bishop because the knight, if it goes this far up, is going to be stuck. Um, but at what point am I attacking the wrong file? Oh, you just directly go, okay, yeah, we could spend a turn doing that. Uh, now what? So, like, what I'm seeing is this. It's not beautiful. It might even be ill-timed because their king is in such a weird position. Oh, if they move the silver, this is undermined, isn't it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, they need to castle before they do something like this. Fair enough. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is so weird. But they don't overwhelm the side of the board, unlike what happened in the game, and I'm just fine. Yeah, and 
further, I'm finding it difficult to find a place from the castle anymore with all their generals so high up the board. So I guess they're just trying to maintain some sort of a holding pattern. Um, I'm confused if their goal should go to 5-2 or 3-2, but regardless, it's just such a mess. And their king is right in the middle of all this mess, and the silver cannot teleport over here. So as soon as the silver moves, this is undermined. So to defend this point, they need to like involve another general. Um, something like that. They don't need to go up. But that's risky, so it's probably safer to move this one over. I don't know. Either way, they're stuck defending against my attack instead of the other way around. And it's... Well, yeah, I guess they could eventually do this, but um, again, like, I should be attacking here somehow. So, yeah, they're going to have to protect this point. Let's say I pass and they defend this. And I don't know, let's say I pass again. Um... Is this the timing where I'm supposed to do this? And like, how does this sort of thing work? Okay. Um, hmm. So... What is going on? Oh! Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, well spotted, Pawn Hub. Nothing less from Pawn Hub. Very, very kind and strong player. Um,. Uh, so, okay. So they don't have time to futz around like all this. Because I just attack too many things that are side by side. And a pawn serves to wedge the generals apart. Because my silver is backed up by my rook and my bishop. Wow. Okay, so this all means... Um... Yeah. Their attacking ideas are so good. Or my attacking ideas are actually good here. Um, not that I had any or all of those ideas during the game, but that there's at least something I can do against this really wonky formation. And therefore, this is a big attack that they can't really stop. So their attack needs to be successful. Um, I moved 25. Can we go pawn 5-5 five five here? I thought about this. Can I? Um. Okay, so in some order, these are the responses. I would think we'd start with this. And then the idea is, like, oops. Uh. Yeah, this sort of thing. Seems like a response. Um, let's get the large board for all our viewers. The idea is silver 5-6 and push 0.45 as well. Yeah. Well, um, something like, okay, this... And then pawn 6-6 six, six to respond to the knight threat. Oh. Okay, well... Um, well, you said to respond to. He's going to play the knight threat anyway. So, yeah, like... I thought about this a little bit. Um, 
I wonder, like, does my rook belong in this file anymore? Um, interesting. Yeah, 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 that's, that, that all makes sense. Should I play the rook over here now and do this? Uh, I wonder if this makes sense. Okay. And like this, I guess. Uh, and then what? Now I'm not so sure. Maybe this is the... I don't know if this is the wrong file for the rook anyway. You're supposed to swing it back and forth a bit, depending on what the circumstance... Uh, yeah, bishop 5-9... Yeah, it does cover this square kind of, and uh, wait, Von Hub seems confident about this somehow. Knight seven seven pawn six five. Interesting. Uh, pawn six five still looks reasonable, although um, I could push my third file pawn. Um, yeah, let's push here. Since I'm... Okay, we take here. I'm in... Am I in any hurry to snap this? I want to, but... Um, maybe this now? Okay. What am I missing? What am I missing? This pawn move. This so I don't get it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but like he keeps suggesting ideas, but I'm not sure what to do next. Um Yeah, if the silver is exchange. Yeah, that's not pleasant. Um, oh, my rook doesn't have anywhere to go. Um, I don't know. Like, is this... No, this doesn't do anything. It almost does something, but not quite. It feels good, but uh, this is not great. This is the point of his earlier pawn move, so I can't pin this with the bishop. Um, uh. Oh, whoops, I'll shoot. Yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, this position looks bad for me. All right, so I messed that up. So... I don't know how to attack this. This is why I always panic and get really weird imbalances. Yeah, I don't like... I'm not sure. The pawn drop is where I'll... Okay. Hmm. Alright, so... You're thinking I should try this again, but without the pawn drop. Um... Uh... 
Uh, just, I can't remember how this went. Um, yeah, I don't remember, but uh, pawn nine four to stop. Oh, that's right. That's what he played here. And that if I take here. Yes, I tried some crazy pawn drops, something or other. Um, uh, why not bishop 9-5 earlier? Oh. Okay. Oh, he doesn't have anything he can block this with, does he? Um, yeah, so maybe this first. Okay, we block with the knight. Is that really? Oh uh, well. Huh. Jeez. So he's threatening the pawn advance on the bishop, and I don't really have a way to crash that. I don't have a way to remove all the defenders. Um. You'd probably try sacrificing the bishop. I mean, yeah, it looks as reasonable as anything else here. Hey, time zombie. We're just doing post-game analysis of a game where I ended up sacrificing half my army. It was great. Um, it was extremely unsound. So I guess this, and heck, I don't know. Um, maybe this, um, I'm not sure when I want to sacrifice the bishop, but, uh, it's getting sacrificed here, that's for sure. Um. Oh. Oh, this is true. Yes, you do owe me a game. Yeah, it'll be good to get our game played. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. This doesn't look very great for me. Um, but at least it's something. Like, what we saw in the game just required blunder after blunder after blunder in the end game. Um, in general, this seems like a decent way to continue. Yeah. I guess so. I should be more accepting of this. Um, well, yeah, no, you're you're right. Pawn Hub is very resourceful, and he's making the best he can of this position. And it is, he's being, he's finding a lot of things that none of us would find. Um. <laughs> yeah, got a time zombie stream. Who knew? I've got my tea. Wow. Uh, I guess I should send a comment to people watching this. Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah, got another one of these. Um, X, I'll need it. Wouldn't want to lose Shodan right after getting it, but let's be real. This is how ratings work. The ratings go up, the ratings come down. Uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Pawnhub for this interesting analysis. Um, yeah, and thanks to Llama Lord and everybody else who helped with this post-game analysis. Yeah, what an adventure. Um, so, can I back up one in the move list? Yeah, let's back up to the head of the variation. So, evidently, it's fine to play this like a central foul rook against this uh, opening. Apparently that's fine. Um... Yeah, 
maybe I need to also study more of like other places I can put the rook. Like the idea of playing right hand fourth file rook seems tempting, given all this other stuff we just looked at. Um, <laughs> fall Technicolor blunders. You don't have to use a face cam. It is possible to stream without using a face cam. Um, but yeah. Don't worry, I'll provide the blunders. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so it's good having this teaching ladder opportunity. It's good that so many strong players are willing to comment on games. Because uh, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Looks like my rating just crossed the barrier, so it looks like I might be playing in this tourney to master. And hopefully um, it'll be a positive experience. I'm far more pensive about this than I was about during, uh, playing in the tourney to Shodan. Because um, like my plan had kind of been... You know, I was going to keep learning Shogi just as uh, a fun hobby, something that, okay, yes, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, so we're just going to keep doing it. Um, and, okay, we'll have some competition because this seems to inspire other players to play well, too. And because everybody's willing to put in such a strong effort teaching each other, um, yeah, we'll continue with it. Um, I hadn't anticipated actually getting anywhere near where I am rating-wise. Did not think that would happen this year. Um, but also I had a misunderstanding about what One Don is about. It's not like the same level as a chess uh, National Master. If National Master, like that is an extremely great achievement. Um, although Fide Master is even higher most of the time, but National Master is something most players cannot attain. Um, yeah. So, um, here, One Don doesn't really equate to National Master. This is like amateur One Don, meaning you've got a solid grasp of the fundamentals of the game. And while my openings might suck, and while I might be pissed off every time I come out of an opening, um, my endgames seem to actually support where I'm at, which is quite ironic, given that whenever I'm on play Shogi, um, I struggle with those puzzles. All those Sume Shogi just, they get the better of me every time. And like, everybody's better at reading those than I am, but uh, somehow we still get games that look like... An, end up like this. So, got some street smarts, got the street shogi skill, but yeah, I want to play better in the opening. I want to play better everywhere, really. So, there's still room for growth, and I'm definitely extremely pensive about playing in the tourney to showdown, or the tourney to master or whatever it's going to be entitled, but um, I think it'll still be a positive experience. It's not like Supernova where you're playing a zillion games. Um, so if it's a commitment of like one game a week or something, I could probably absorb one loss a week for quite a while until we finally get there, but uh, it's probably better that I play in that tournament. Um, so... We'll see how it goes.